show was called Elevation. It's called Elevation 1049. So 1049 refers to the, the meters above sea level, which is measured at the train tracks at the train station. And so in some ways it became a show about these sort of different variances that art could take, different levels and different frequencies. And this latest one is particularly about frequencies in terms of light and sound, in this instance, rather than measurements of height or elevation. We have one piece which is a, a semi-permanent piece that's going to be here for two years. And all the other pieces are here for two days. Semi-permanent piece, which is Mirage, is really about light frequency and about how light and the image of this structure interact. And then most of the other pieces are performative pieces. They're ephemeral, they're transitive, they disappear, they exist only in memory. And a lot of them are sound-based. And also the idea of, of sound and frequencies sort of resonated with the thought that you know there's also a history of sound travel through the Alps uh, for communication. We were interested in how like sound is absorbed through through snow and through humidity and sort of refracted with the ice. But at least when we started coming here, there was very little art outside. We were both interested in this idea of site-specific art and the way that a place can be generative, can create art. We had this sort of conceit that we could somehow exchange the white cube for the white landscape. So we did this winter show in the Alps where the backdrop is really what you see outside. Mirage is a site-specific installation uh, which we created uh, here in the Alps. And um, we were very interested in creating an uh, environment really a, a sculpture that you could occupy, that you could be inside, and would function almost as a perceptual device. I think the sculpture in many ways is, is living. I wanted to have something which was changing continuously. So what you see here is essentially a work which is created out of reflections of the landscape, the viewer, environment around you. And I think in that situation, you have something which is uh, transforming. It creates some very uh, hallucinatory moments. <laughs> Mirage is a, it's, it's a project that I've been working on for a long time. Initially we created this project in uh, the California desert. It was on a desert hillside looking down into uh, this kind of open expanse of land, this kind of infinite view, and it was very dry, very rugged. As we were developing that project I started to recognize that the project would actually become a completely different artwork if it was sited in different locations. Uh, it would really kind of take on the behavior of the landscape around it. So that kind of brings us to where we are now, which is uh, in, the, in the Alps. But what will happen here is obviously this landscape will thaw and spring will lead to summer. Uh, this field is occupied by cattle, it's tall green grass. And it's that kind of transformational quality, I think, that I'm really interested in with this work. This idea that you could come back here tonight or for sunrise and it would really be um, optically be very different. The, the colors, the chromas, the, um, the essence of the work. So for um, Elevation 1049, I did a piece called Barricades Raptures. It's an installation, a sculptural installation made out of uh, 48 microphone stands and microphones in a formation, a different formation. So each grouping of microphone creates a form, whether it be a circle, a square, or a triangle. The lines of the microphones run the floor and create some, some sort of a sketch on the floor of the transmitted sound. And these forms create enclosed spaces that are completely like a sound void. So any sound that happens within that space is funneled out and outputted. My name is Suzanne Chani and I am called the diva of the diode. I'm also uh, considered a pioneer in electronic music. I worked with Don Buchla in the 60s and became an impassioned devotee of his instrument and I played it exclusively for 10 years back then. Here I am 40 years later playing the bukla again. It's like riding a bicycle for me. Exotourism is a trip to, to another planet, to another level of consciousness. It's inspired by science fiction, lots of movies. It's also an encounter with Perez, a fascination with pop songs, electropop. And noisy stuff. And super noisy dark stuff. Et pourtant, je crois qu'il faudrait pas. Et moi, je tremble à l'idée de. Super 
surtout si tu dis que... Et ton tournage, il va... Parce que moi, j'arrive plus à... My own Vitali's piece, the, the burning bridges, had to be helicoptered up to the top of the Aigli. But the weather can change and, you know, it, the, the bridge is meant to be burnt this evening, but it's quite possible that we won't get up there. You know, the person who invited me here had heard me play in Marfa, Texas. I think she, you know, she was so excited about the environment and creating something for this place that actually I did do that. Usually I start with, say, the sound of the ocean, because. The ocean is very important to me. But this time I started with what I thought was ski, you know, ski sounds. <laughs> I have no idea if anybody related to it that way. And my vision was basically outputting these female voices, strong female voices, onto this pristine landscape outside. And so each woman um, was contained inside one barricade and she had to move within this very restricted space. But at the same time, a small movement um, brought on a sonic expansion. The location where we did this airplane hangar that was facing this beautiful mountain covered with snow. And for me, the idea was really to propagate these female voices and in a way contaminate this very white landscape.